is the church of God. I mean, which stuff falls. I mean, you know, come on. He said, no, they didn't have anything like that. It was all just like straight worship to God and leave. Well, that's confusing to me. Well, then one night we had a discussion about God. Who is God? And I'm trying to explain the Trinity. The subject of the Trinity comes up. Now, if you know about the Trinity, Trinity is the concept in Christianity. God is one, but at the same time he has three distinct something inside of his Godhead that are all different, but they're one at the same time. And how do you explain one equals three? And this is a phenomenon that they've been trying to deal with for 1800 years because it didn't really start until the second century when they really got into this subject of how God can be three and one at the same time. <clears throat> the one who actually originated the concept just as he was dying, and before he died he said actually it doesn't work and he threw the whole idea out for himself but the other people kept going with it. <laughs> one of the things that we did and they told me and I used the example was that it's like an apple. The apple has a skin on the outside, it has meat on the inside, seeds on the inside. Three things, one apple. But when you think about it, it could have different seeds and then right away it could become, you know, 15 or 12 or some other number because it's not just one, 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 you know, it's a different number. So that doesn't make sense. Another thing you could open it up, could have a worm in it. Now what is that? I mean, where are you going to go with that story? <laughs> And you're comparing God to an apple. God Almighty, the creator, the sustainer of the universe. And you compare him to an apple. Then I mentioned this to my cross-carrying friend. He didn't like this. He said it's like the egg. The egg is having the shell. Inside the shell is the white. Inside of the white is the yellow. So these three things make one egg. There's no problem here. Compared God to an egg. And what if the egg is a double yolk? God becomes four. <laughs> and if you ever had the experience of opening up eggs, you know sometimes they're rotten. I don't want a God that's rotten. I don't want a God with a worm. Uh, it doesn't work. Somebody else, a young man, was telling me, don't you know you're a preacher? Don't you know? Look. He said, you see me? I'm one. My wife is one and my son is one. One, one, one. We're one, one, and one. And we're one family. So one plus one plus one equals one. And by the way, I don't want people with this kind of thinking doing my income tax, do you? Anyway, that's another thought, isn't it? So we asked Muhammad one time, I'll never forget I'm asking him about this. Look what he said. When we asked him, what do you say and how is God with you and what's going on with that? And he said, our book tells us real clear. Don't say Salat. Don't say three. <coughs> Trinity is mentioned in the Quran and it's saying there is no Trinity. Don't believe in it and tell the Christian that it would be better for them if they don't say that. Leave off saying three. So Trinity mentioned in the Quran. But Trinity is not mentioned anywhere in the Bible. And while we're on the subject, the word Bible is not mentioned in the Bible. But Bible is mentioned in Quran. It confirms that the Bible really came from Allah. And if you don't believe that, you can't be a Muslim. You have to believe in what was revealed before. Suhufa Ibrahim of what Musa. The books of Abraham and Moses. The scrolls that were sent to them. You have to believe in the Torah of Moses. You have to believe in the Zabur. The Psalms of David. You have to believe in the Injil or the Evangel. Or the good news, the gospel of Jesus the Christ. And he's called Jesus the Christ. Messiah. Messiah means the Christ. Messiah. Which is Ibn Mary, The son of Mary. Now subhanAllah. Look at this confirmation. Islam is saying nice things about the Christians. Many nice things. One is said the closest to you in belief you'll find from the Christians. Those who worship Allah day and night. And that's priests, isn't it? Priests are really, many of them are sincere. They're trying their best to worship God. And when they say, God, guide me, look what can happen. And that's our subject. That's what we're talking about. So the next thing that happens, the priest goes back again. And by the way, we had many subjects. My wife, my father, myself, the priest, 
My stepmother, even my two little daughters, we're trying to include them. They're too small to talk, but they, we're trying to make something nice, you know, let them understand religion is something good. And of course, our friend Muhammad. One day the priest asked, can I go to your mosque again with you? He said, okay. This day he took him in early and they didn't come back all day. And we worried because they didn't come back, they didn't come back, and they gave, it was nighttime. And we lived in the country and we worried about people being gone that long and then all of a sudden here he comes back, pulled up in the driveway, he got out of the car and I looked out there and I said, what's going on? I recognized Muhammad right away, but who is that guy with him? Because the one with him is wearing a long white uh, dress. He's got on a little white cap, you know. And I said, he looks kind of like that priest, you know, Father Peter Jacobs, you know. And when he got inside the house, I looked at him, I said, oh my God, Pete, did you become a Muslim? <laughs> he said, a shadow la ilaha illallah, shadow Muhammad. He said in English, he said, I bear witness there's no God to worship except God. Muhammad's his messenger. I said, a Catholic priest. Look at this. I went and I got my camera. And I set it up and lights. I'm going to record this whole thing. I want to ask him all of this stuff. I said, this is amazing. How can a priest from a Catholic church, a man who has dedicated his life to serving the Lord, and a priest can never get married, never have any children. He lost everything for his belief. You know what I mean? Give up the world. He was preaching in South America, Central America, and Mexico. Even though he was Irish Catholic, he learned the Spanish language to try to call those people to, to Jesus, you know. How could he just go over to the side? How? Good question. So that's why I wanted to make a film of it. By the time I got it all loaded up, ready to go, he fell sound asleep. And I never did get anything except him sitting with his head down like that. I went upstairs. We had the upstairs part of the house. And I got up there. I started talking to my wife about it. It's pretty late at night, you know. I said, you know, a Catholic priest going to Islam. And, you know, Islam looks like a bigger religion than we saw it. And... Islam so and so and finally she said to me, I want a divorce. <coughs> I said, what? Thought. I said, divorce? What's going on here now? She's telling me that, you know, with all this subject on religion and so and so, and we're talking about it, it looks like, uh, you know, there's going to be some problem between her and I over religion. And I said, well, you don't have to worry about anything like this. And she said, no. Um, even a, a, a Muslim can't be married to a Christian. And I said, hold on. Number one, okay, I never said I want to be a Muslim. I'm talking about him, this guy. I said, I don't have to do that. I don't want to be a Muslim. I'm not anything with this. I'm just they're interested in the subject. And by the way, you remember number two, that Muhammad, what did he say? That this idea of a Christian and Muslim can't be married is only that a Muslim woman shouldn't be married to a Christian man. She said, actually, that's what I'm talking about. I want to be a Muslim. <laughs> so I was so happy. I said, good, this makes it an easy way for me to tell her, you know. Great. So I said, the good news is, I too would like to be a Muslim. She just looked at me. There's no change of face. I said, really, I, I, I want to be a Muslim too. I just didn't know how to tell you. She said, I don't believe you. I said, no, buddy, you don't believe me. What do you mean? She said, either you are lying right now, or you were lying a few minutes ago when you said you didn't want to be a Muslim, which is, either way, you were a liar. She caught me, huh? <laughs> Whoa! She said, get out. So I'm leaving, I'm walking down the steps, you know, and I went, wait a minute, this is my father's house, where I'm going? <laughs> These women from Texas to the South, she was from South Carolina, you know, they're tough. <laughs> I don't know about Egyptian women. <laughs> I don't know, but I know that Texas and Southern women are tough. She threw me out of my own house. I went and I woke up Muhammad and I took him and outside. I said, you and me, we got to talk. You brought this in my house. I'm blaming him. But who invited him to come, by the way? I did. So we walked and we talked. I, no, 
We walked, I talked all night <laughs> until the sun's coming up and he has to pray. And I know it's something I have to do for myself. There were things I needed to get in order because in order to be a Muslim or to even know about Islam, one of the things is you must tell the truth. You must be honest and you must get rid of whatever is <laughs> deceitful around you or you're not going to be guided. This is very important. And so I had to make necessary steps, which Alhamdulillah I did. And then I put my head down on a piece of plywood outside where I thought nobody can see me except the law. And I put my head down on that piece of plywood, facing what I think is maybe the direction, you know, of Mecca. And I said, Oh God, if you're there, guide me. And I couldn't think of anything else to say. And I tried. I couldn't think of nothing else. That's it. I said, well, that wasn't a very big prayer, was it? <laughs> and I got up from that and I, I looked around and I want to see a sign, you know. Maybe there'll be a rainbow. <laughs> or, uh, you know, a star in the daytime. That would be interesting. Or some angels, maybe. Or some music. Or birds. Or nothing. Just a cloudy day. Kind of like today. Look out there. It's just kind of, you know, a plain day. That's all it was. <laughs> but inside, I realized something different. I realized that a person has to change themselves. If you don't change yourself, there's not anything going to change. And in Islam, we know that. Because Allah said in the Quran, He never changes the condition of a people until the people change themselves. And I knew I wanted to change. I wanted to stop being, you know, prejudiced. I want to stop being hypocritical. I want to stop being, you know, thinking I'm better than somebody else. I want to stop being shifty dealings in business. I want to be honest and straightforward. Really, really honest. Whatever is real and honest, I want to deal with that. And for sure, if it's something I don't know, I need to say I don't know what it is. And not pretend I know something I don't know. Real honesty. And by the way, in the United States of America, that's a very rare commodity to find real, true honesty. And I have found it amongst Muslims, by the way. Some Muslims. I won't say all, oh, but some. Alhamdulillah. So I got up from that position and I thought about it. <clears throat> I said, I guess I have to do it today. This is it. I went upstairs, I made a shower. I came down, and in front of the ex-priest, now Muslim, and the Egyptian, <coughs> I made the shahada. Ashadu la ilaha illallah. Ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. <coughs> and then my wife immediately made her shahada right after that. Amazing. I went to my father afterwards that afternoon. I said, Dad, what do you think? He said, oh, I'm really happy for you. I said, well, what do you think? He said, well, I told you. It's a good religion. Go ahead. I said, well, what about you? He said, what about me? I said, well, you said it's a good religion. He said, for you. <laughs> so he didn't accept right away. It was some time later, actually, much later, that I was sitting in a masjid, and my father used to take me to the masjid. In fact, he began even praying in the masjid with us. And then people would come to me afterwards, and they'd say, well, how long has your father been a Muslim? And I'd have to say, well, he's not actually a Muslim yet. He believes like that uh, there's only one God, Muhammad is the messenger. And he prays and everything, but he's not really a Muslim yet. And they go, huh? Then the next guy come to me, you know, and they'll say the same thing, and I say the same thing. And after a while, I got tired of saying the same thing. I said, well, whether he's sitting over there, go ask him how long he's been a Muslim. <laughs> so one of them went, one of the brothers went to my father. My father was sitting actually close to me in the chair. And he said, Sir, how long have you been a Muslim? And my father smiled and he looked at me and he looked back at the brother and he said, About a year. I said, Allah Akbar. My father just didn't want to tell me because we had, you know, he was stubborn and I was stubborn. We keep arguing over stupid things that don't. I learned later in Islam you should never even be in these discussions anyway. There are a lot of things that you can ask a scholar, but you don't ask each other. Because all you're going to do is just fight because you don't have the knowledge. You can't solve the thing. And You'll, you may be even saying wrong things. SubhanAllah. So that was my father. I said, this is amazing. Then we came to meet another one. His name was Joe. My father's name was Joseph. 
but a young boy, Joe, who's 